my immortal rock toss challenge. All right, quick turbo thought. Simple air is better in terms of uh, design. So, shout out to my friend Josh White, JT and Soul.wordpress.com, and also Mystery Ranch, MysteryRanch.com. The kind of the most bizarre name for a bag, but big fan of it. So, with design, it's actually really interesting. The for me, the best design is actually the most simple and minimalistic. I find this bag is probably the most simple and elegant design I've seen is that the straps on top kind of close like this, right? So you don't actually require an additional closure thing, right? And you know, you could fit your, your iPad in here, right? And also a little iPhone SE, zip it up. And it's funny, it's like, Feel like I'm becoming more and more American, right? To even have the pride of the crater is actually super important. So even here, right? A little white tag, which is usually super ugly in other products. Here, right? Bozeman, Montana, made in the USA. Um, USA flag, start date, BN, built by, final inspection, right? So all the small elements make for great design. Like God is in the detail and the devil's in the details. Even this like super robust YKK zipper um, is super nice. And yeah, just like the simplest bag possible. Um, I mean, I don't know why it's called Mystery Ranch. I also think this logo is very, kind of looks like the Razor logo. I like the Bozeman Montana. And this black with the this neon orange is actually a super good color combination. I think I'll actually end up using this bag a lot. Uh, I use the other bigger bag for hiking. It's very, very nice. So, every new day is a chance for Air Kim's Immortal Rock Toss Challenge. So the biggest benefit of simple stuff, simple design, you just end up doing more and uh, having more fun with it. So even the GoPro, don't use the mount. You can innovate more without it. Okay, even fun challenge, take the rock, throw it behind you. It's quite fun. Toss in the air and let go. I think I love it when I toss the rock. Or just shot put. And bada bing, bada boom, that's all you gotta do. So why is it that embracing simple things in simpleness is better? I mean, first pragmatic thought is the simpler something is, the fewer encumbrances you got along the way. And as a consequence, you just kind of go out and just kind of do more, adventure more, explore more, and uh, become more. So I think one of the things that are a little bit foolish about American modes of thinking is thinking that doing more is, is better, right? So I think this is kind of a foolish idea. So for example, um, what's more impressive or interesting or better for your physiological strength to do to pick up a one pound dumbbell and then rep it repetition it lift it a hundred thousand times or to pick up a thousand pounds once off the floor um once every month or every two months i think the the latter um 
and the nice thing with simple stuff so i think when it's simpler there's higher adherence so for example um the reason i really like the rico jared digital camera the jared 3x etc is the simpler it is the more you're just gonna have it you know in your front pocket right zip it up uh even also with the gopro turning off the lcd screen in the front turn off the blinking lights um certainly there's much more optimal ways to do it but the upside of doing what's simpler is you'll just end up vlogging more and more naturally having more fun with it and i think that's kind of the the point of it all right uh same thing with view from five finger shoes uh i wear them without socks just slip them on just kind of go out and you could deadlift hill sprint if you want to uh you know whatever also the upside of just wearing a simple clothes outfit get some uv radiations is uh good but anyways so also i think one of the big problems about american thinking is we try to over optimize things making things like rather than just doing the thing we try to do the thing the most quote quote optimally or in the best or good way right but the problem about that is that uh like this is my belief to do just do the thing that you want to do and do it poorly is better than not doing the thing because paralysis by analysis we we think too much about doing the thing and we just end up not doing it so uh, one of the downsides of having too many cameras is you know the desire thing the desire what's the word desire datum is to go out and make photos right that's that's the point but then the bigger the heavier the more cumbersome the more complicated it is the less likely you are to do so so there becomes this um this sort of contradictory conflict where the desired end is to make more photos but then trying to make good photos with like a big ass camera whatever a good camera there's some sort of mismatch here right and so it's my belief that it's better to just strive to do the thing poorly or badly than to not do it at all so for example um you know, everyone wants to get fit the reason i recommend the rock toss challenge or just getting heavy ass kettlebell um doesn't matter if you're a guy or girl i recommend just buying the heavier one heaviest one you could afford or get either the 70 pounder or the 105 pounder um the beast is a, a good idea <clears throat> even cindy could swing the 105 pound kettlebell i think she could swing it with both hands certainly she could swing the 70 pounder with just one hand but anyways so the simpler the approach the higher the adherence and the better um so rather than like you know for example if you're like super duper busy right the upside of having a heavy ass kettlebell is it's just there in your living room and all you have to do is swing it like two or three times and boom you're done with your quote quote workout right um but then once again americans we tend to want to like optimize it you know like i want a proper bench and a bench press and they got to do the i want a squat rack a power rack whatever but now the more i think about it, i'm just like just use the simplest possible thing and just do the thing that you uh want to do um and so for me i like the idea that i could create infinite no boundaries, no barriers, and um, no self-censorship. The worst type of censorship is self-censorship where you want to do the thing, but you're afraid that other people can critique you or say it's not good or ignore you or whatever, and you just end up not doing the thing. So one of the, so for example, I got friends who love music and they want to make their own beats, right? They feel like I gotta make it like a super professional and take a beat making class. I'm like, bro, just open up GarageBand, on your iPhone, your iPad, your laptop, and just fuck around with the settings, and boom, make your beat, right? And 
then people might like kind of roll their eyes and be like, oh, but it's bad. I'm like, bro, like, how, who are you to critique me for calling it bad? At least I've, I've done made the thing rather than you, you know, sit back in your high chair and then critique me for actually having the courage and the chutzpah or the, the, the balls to make it. So essentially ignore critics because they tend to be a bunch of skinny fat losers who just want to augment their own self-esteem by putting you down. But anyways, um, oh, look at this. Hadong, South Korea is the future. Um, and, and yeah, like, can you imagine, right? Like, let's say your kid is trying to learn how to draw with crayons or whatever, right? Can you imagine like constantly co co correcting your kid be like, yo, that's bad. You gotta draw, you gotta color inside the lines. And I'm like, you look at the masters of art like Picasso or whatever, right? Their greatest innovation is like not drawing inside the lines, not coloring inside the lines, just, you know, abstract. And then also even Matisse, right? He, of course, he knew how to paint and draw. Towards the end of his life, he's just doing cutouts, right? And that's what he's remembered for. So even some of the greatest artists in history, they tend towards simplicity towards the end of their lives. And that's, a, that's actually another thing that a fun shortcut to better extract wisdom from, you know, people you want to emulate or successful people is uh, work backwards, like look at the end of their lives. What were they doing the end of their lives? And usually it's a sign of what's really critically important. So for example, um, even our best friend Steve Jobs, I think he only passed when he was like 50, 55, really sad. Pancreatic cancer. Um, he was, you know, all about the marketing and design elements of things, uh, the iPad and charting out the future roadmap for uh, Apple. And what did he probably not do? Care about money, logistics, finances, and all the other, um, the things that are very taxing, take a lot of time and mental energy, but are actually not your Archimedes lever. So in life, that's why I think that it's better to put more horsepower into that which you're already really, really good at and just ignore everything else. Um, it'll be fine, right? Also, one of the things that's very humbling about being here in the mountains, surrounded by these quadrillion trees and rocks, ultimately what you do, it, <laughs> this is upside, right? It kind of almost doesn't really matter that much because you know, you're gonna die, you're certainly gonna make an impact, but then sooner or later people are gonna forget about you and what you did, right? And that's, that's totally cool, right? Like, even nowadays, you know, think about Homer, the epic Greek poet, people think more about Homer Simpson than they do the heroic ancient Greek, right? And also even Steve Jobs, right? Um, ain't no young kid know who Steve Jobs is. And even if they do, they just like, oh, wasn't he like an asshole? <laughs> is pretty much his legacy, right? Um, even like, I think if you ask the average middle school, high school kid, who's the CEO of Apple, I don't think people really know or care. Um, even nowadays, uh, Michael Jordan, right? Kids don't know who Michael Jordan is, MJ is. They know the the Jordan sneakers, but they don't actually know that the Jumpman logo is based off of the real human being. And also they don't know or care that he's still alive. So essentially what I mean is all is fleeting, etc. But just because that's the case doesn't mean that you shouldn't try to attempt it, right? So for example, I do a lot of these um, vlogs, YouTube videos. I do it mostly for my own entertainment and for the chance that even one other human being on planet Earth will find some sort of motivation or interesting thoughts from it. And you know, like some of the videos I upload, right? I like get like three views, five views, 10 views. And then the question is, is it still worth it? I think so. Like, what if one of those people who watch your video was like Kanye or Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos or Joe Rogan, whoever, right? Oh, look at all the some crouching tiger hidden dragon um so i think it's worth it and i think that's also the problem with metrics right is that we make the the foolish naive thought that more is better but that's actually not the case right like would you this is um pardon the 
the crude analogy, but assuming you want to maximize your uh, your your sexual satisfaction, right? Would you rather prefer a hundred thousand, you know, average looking human beings or below average looking human beings or the one most beautiful human being on the planet? Probably the second, right? Or similarly speaking, would you rather want a thousand Honda Civics or a single McLaren or a Lamborghini? Probably the latter, right? So caring about numbers and views and stuff like that, I think it's actually a bad, it's a dismotivator for us. So another way to become more creatively productive, whatever, is get rid of our dismotivators, things that make us either feel depressed or dismotivated. For me, it tends to be metrics, right? Like, you know, I try to hide and block the views and things as much as I can, but always accidentally, I kind of sometimes look at it. And of course, like, you know, makes you feel like a little bit depressed, but still like, if you think about long-term, um, you know, even anything about the Spartan 300s, right? King Leonidas, the 300 uber elite Spartan men soldiers as far superior than just having a million slavish Greek Pers um, the Persian soldiers, right? So if you want some motivation, better to just watch uh, the movie 300. And also the thing that's interesting is at the end of the story, and actually believe it or not, it's actually based on a true story. Um, you know, King Leonidas and his 300 die, right? And yet when you look at history, they are valorized because not because they won or lost, it's just more of like how much courage and chutzpah and manliness and badassery they exhibited. Um, even something that people don't know is when, you know, the ancient Greeks tried Socrates for corrupting the youth, which you probably did, um, they put him to death. You know, everyone's like, oh, Socrates, you gotta think about your kids, like, don't drink the hemlock. But he's like, my legacy is more important than my children and he essentially down the the hemlock right and apparently he actually didn't like his wife xanthropy too much either but anyways um so but ultimately all that tends to be quite superficial in so far much as at the end of the day it almost don't really matter too much i love this big ass rock he's gonna stay around a lot longer after i'm dead um but anyways so when it comes to live things and stuff like that, opt for bad and just do it, just publish it, just get it out there.